and believers are removed. Dr. Vanaby dogmatically and prophetically believes that June 26, 2011 was the beginning of the countdown to the most momentous event in history, Christ's return. On that date, churches met in 26 states to begin the union of Christianity and Islam, called Chrislam. In this video study entitled, Chrislam, the One World Religion Emerging, Dr. and Mrs. Vanapi have documented the most shocking information ever taped, using over 30 political and religious leaders to back up and verify every word spoken, including Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, Rick Warren, President Obama, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley MacLaine, plus Jewish rabbis and Muslim clerics. What shocking statements did these celebrities make for or against Chrislam, the one world religion? You'll be shocked, stunned, and startled as you hear it. Order this video immediately if you want to know what in the world is going on politically and religiously as you examine Chrislam, the one world religion emerging. If ever I wanted to encourage you to order, there's the 800 number, there's the address, anything that we've ever done, this is a must. Jack, it's happening today. Just last night we had the biggest order in eight years, and God is working, and listen to me, during my ministry, 64 years of it, I've had 11 death threats, and they're going to try to stop this message. They can't. I've got it recorded, and you'll hear my voice in the years to come. This will be remembered in the tribulation period because it will happen. Yes, Jack, but we're going to be hearing your voice for a long time right Amen. here. Amen. All right, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Make the call immediately. All your questions will be answered on here. And now, friends, we're going to be going on. Remember those three words, apostates, false prophets, and compromising ministers? Well, the first we've dealt with, the apostates, those who turn away from the Bible and say, oh, that's not what it really means. We want to give a different interpretation. All right, the next, false prophets and compromising ministers. Now, who has sort of been promoting this? Let's take a look, please. Of course, we know this beautiful lady. Oprah Winfrey, she of course is the queen of the New Age movement. And you know, friends, she was very, very loved and influential in promoting the New Age movement, Jack. Oh, very definitely. Now, what is the New Age movement? It's a group of people who have taken on a particular title using the language I am. And what they mean is that the name of God, which is I am that I am, and the name of Jesus, which is the same, is the title they have because they are little gods. This is going on? Yes. Now, let me prove something. How do I know that Father Yahweh also uses the title, I am that I am? In Exodus 3.12, he tells Moses to go and warn the people of Israel, and he says, but they won't listen to me. Who shall I say sent me? And he says in Exodus 3.14, tell him, I am that I am hath sent you, Yahweh God of the Old Testament. Jesus is talking to the group in his day in John 8, 56 to 58. And he's talking about Abraham. And they said, what do you know about Abraham? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Why, he lived 2,160 years ago. How could you have known him? Because I am the second member of the Trinity from all eternity, Micah 5, 2. And that's my name now. The New Agers have picked up on that. That's why Shirley MacLaine standing at Malibu Beach in the movie on television said, I am. That's why Oprah Winfrey, when she had Eckhart Tolle on the program, finally used the language, I am that I am. Did he? And Rexella, this is the shocker. What a Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 5, many shall come in my name saying, I am that I am. The Greek word there for many is pulos, can mean tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, and there are millions in the New Age movement today. And what are they saying? I am that I am. I am Christ. Rexella, she has promoted so many, and one of them was Helen Schuckman, who would go into a trance, and the evil spirit would come to her and call himself Jesus, and gave her all kinds of blasphemies against the real Jesus. And she speaks against sin. And this is where 
Schuler and Rick Warren enter the picture in a few minutes. All right, let's take a look at who she is. Uh, a very lovely looking lady here, Helen Schuchman. And uh, let's take a look at some points from her manuscript. First of all, there's no such thing as sin. Wow. The atonement is the final lesson men need to learn, for it teaches him that never having sinned, he has no need of salvation. Number three, a slain Christ has no meaning. Number four, the journey to the cross should be Christ's last useless, useless. journey. And again, do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. This breaks my heart. The name of Jesus Christ as such is but a symbol, is a symbol that is safely used as a replacement for the many names of all the gods to which we pray. God help her. Oh, I cannot Forgive believe her. that she could write something like this, Jack. Blasphemy. Right. And we're going to, in a moment, get into some of Schuler's sayings and Rick Warren's because it follows right along even to the removal of the cross as has been promoted by Rick Warren, and that's why he can speak at the Muslim convention, because they hate the cross, and when Christ returns as their prophet, he destroys every cross. God help us. Not only do we have apostates, false Christs, and false prophets, but we have a lot of wishy-washy jellyfish ministers, too, who can't take a chiropractic adjustment because they have no backbone. God forgive you. Oh, Jack. Well, let me just say that some who have been caught up in the New Age movement have come out of it. Take a look, if you will, please, at the book, The Light That Was Dark, from the New Age to Amazing Grace, Warren Smith. And of course, someone who has been promoting, as Jack said, the New Age movement, Robert Schuller, the father. Rethinking Robert Schuller from my perspective, as a former New Age follower, I believe that Robert Schuller's mission has always been to rethink and change biblical Christianity into something new, as in New Age, new spirituality. A second book that he has written deceived on purpose, The New Age Implications of the Purpose Driven Church by Warren Smith. And of course, he's referring to Rick Warren. He wrote The Purpose Driven Church. Warren keeps faith at Islamic Conference. I've used that before, but I'm going to go on here with Christopher Gregory. And this is what he has to say about Rick Warren. It's no secret to many who believe in traditional conservative biblical views that Rick Warren has ultimately forsaken the gospel for a social gospel, which is no gospel at all, but a gospel of popular ideas not founded on the word. Now, Warren's beliefs of the removal of the cross, he goes on to say in most churches, has a pro-Islamic stance, and his purpose-driven theology all point to the complete rejection of fundamental biblical truth. Fundamental biblical truth. Can you imagine we need to have that in our lives and believe it, Jack? Oh, Rexella, let me add it. First of all, let's take Schuler of the Crystal Cathedral. What these people say is correct. And you know that he even ran a course of miracles at the Crystal Cathedral. And I have documentation from members who sat there and took the course by Helen Schuchman, who says there is no sin and Christ died a useless death because we are not sinners. Is it any wonder that he constantly says, don't talk about sin, you'll destroy a man's self-esteem? Really? A man ought not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, Mr. Schuler. That's Romans 12, verse 2 and 3. Not only that, but there's not one just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not, Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. All we like sheep have gone astray, Isaiah 53, 6. Listen to Jesus. No one is good except one. That's God, Luke 18, 19. And you are ordained by the Reformed Church of America, the Christian Reform Movement, many good godly Christians in the group, and they have a five-point saying. It's called TULIP. And the first point is that there is total depravity in every man. I like to say total inability. Total depravity. And they get it from Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they've used a seat. The poison of snakes is under the lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their 
feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the peace have they not known. And adds, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, verse 23. And you deny all that. God forgive you. And for following Shookman's baloney and blasphemy about our Jesus. Let's get over to Rick Warren for a moment. Van Amby Ministries has already moved one million of these where Rick Warren says to ministers, don't preach on sin, don't talk about being saved and lost, call them church and unchurch, don't talk about heaven and hell, don't give an invitation. Why should you if you don't preach all those things? No one's going to get saved. Saved and lost, listen, how ridiculous it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be churched. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be church, Romans 10, 13. Lost, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the unchurched. God help us with that kind of nonsensical interpretations and no heaven hell. God forgive us for this apostasy in this day and age. Now, Jack, I went to church a long time before I was saved. I was a church member before I was saved. But how wonderful to have Jesus in my heart. And I am saved, ready for heaven, only because of him. Oh, Jack, would you give the invitation how we can be saved, saved. In my ministry, I have given thousands of invitations and 2,500,000 have come to Jesus. We're praying if he gives me a couple more years to hit the 3 million mark, and maybe you'll be one of them today. Listen, not to me, to God. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved and not charged, saved. Father, I come in Jesus' name, the precious, holy name of my Savior who died for my sins. Today, I'm hungry for salvation. Jesus, I want you. I ask you this very moment to come into my heart and save me for all time and eternity. In your name I pray this precious Jesus. Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, there's my address. Write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little book on First Steps in a New Direction. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive the new offer, Chrislam. Chuck? My friend, to order Chrislam, the one world religion emerging, on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. And now back to Rex Hour. Thank you, Chuck. There's the address. There's the phone number. Call or write. Let me leave you with this thought about the Bible. Many people put their Bible on the shelf instead of in their heart. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.